Lucy and Vanilla talk baseball. The man and Bobby Feller, the Scooter, the Barber, and the Duke. They knew them all from long. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart came out oof, bloody ages ago, but this video technically isn't too late for most of you because you don't have a PS5 yet. You can't get one of the bastards. So, this is a video that will be relevant for years to come. Only joking, nothing I've ever made is relevant. Anyway, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. It's Ratchet and Clank. Pretty good though. Rift Apart has been heralded as the first proper, real, true, proper, authentic, actually true, real justification for owning a PS5. And it's good to have an video game that does that. And the game does hold up its end of the bargain in terms of validating the PS5's power. No one game can justify owning a big expensive console, but if you already have that big expensive console, here's a game that actually makes it feel like you have a big expensive new console. Obviously the visuals are a big selling point of this game and it looks very, very pretty indeed. Uh, personally, I just like bright colors, which Ratchet and Clank has, so I'm pretty happy with that. So long as I get lots of bright things flashing in front of me. I like bright colors, I like shapes, I like noises, and this game has all of those. But if you're a little more discerning with your palette, then you might like to know that there's also lots of effects going on on screen. Every time Ratchet hits crates, the wood goes flying and the bolts that serve as currency spread out everywhere. An early section has you going down a grind rail in a city with lots of traffic, with lots of lights flashing around, with rain effects. It's clearly there to swing the PS5's big dick around, but Unlike a game that exists purely to be a tech demo, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart is also a very good game, which you like to see. So visually it's really impressive, and as someone who cares more about artistic direction, I enjoy that it's animated really nicely and the colour scheme is so vibrant and bright. The game feels very alive as a result. Special attention must of course be given to the game's loading times or relative lack thereof. This game is focused on interdimensional travel, and it uses that premise, not necessarily to give us uh, lots of new enemy designs and, and bizarre scenarios. It's there to show off the fact that the PS5 can load things real, real fast. And as someone who's been skeptical of the PS5's power, and still, as, as the years sort of show us exactly what the console can do, still somewhat skeptical about all of the heady promises, I will say, that the relative lack of loading in Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart is impressive. There are multiple sequences where you're going through portals and entering completely different environments and you're doing this at a rapid pace. There are bonus areas that take the form of dimensional pockets which appear as essentially holes in reality and you walk through the hole and you're immediately in this, uh, this floaty dimensional space. And I gotta say, it's never not cool to walk through a hole in reality and be in a completely new environment and have the transition between the two be completely seamless. But all of this would mean exactly bollocks if the game itself wasn't good. And I'm pleased to report that Rift Apart is actually, indeed, very good. As I intimated subtly earlier, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart is Ratchet and Clank. It's got the exact same DNA, the same structure as previous Ratchet and Clank games. But having been a while since the last Ratchet and Clank, and the formula itself being simple and incredible fun, because you really, you can't go wrong by playing a giant rat with loads of wacky and weird guns running around just shooting the shit out of everything that's shooting the shit out of you. I'd say Rift Apart is well worth getting into if you've enjoyed the previous games, but what this one has over the others is an increased sense of movement and real fluid movement at that. As you progress through the game, you will unlock various features such as wall running and a dash that you can do both on the ground and in the air. A little bit after that, you get what are essentially rocket powered roller skates and they will prove to be the best thing in the world for the duration of the game. They're really fun. You press the rocket powered roller skate button and you start rocket powered roller skating and then you press it again and then you get faster and you click it again, you get faster and then 
faster and then you hold it and then you're going like so fast it's stupid and the really enjoyable kind of stupid. The range of weapons of course is always a big drawing point to the Ratchet and Clank series and they're all real fun to use here. You've got your more straightforward weapons, simple blaster, simple shotgun style weapon, simple bomb throwing glove and they're backed up by more exotic offerings such as Mr. Fungi where you throw out a mushroom that floats around shooting at people for you and there's the topiary sprinkler which I love. You throw down a, well, a sprinkler and it hits enemies with water and covers them in grass and flowers and then they stay there stuck for a while. Whether you want ice shooters or nuke launchers or sniper rifles even, Rift Apart's probably got a handful of weapons that will appeal to you. And the game wastes very little time getting between you and the action. There is a story, there are cutscenes. They're okay, the story's fine. Uh, Ratchet and Clank's sense of humour has never quite made me laugh, but I don't find it offensive. It doesn't annoy me or anything, it's not obnoxious. It's just there and it's cute, it's a cute game. The kids probably find it amusing. Uh, I like Dr Nefarious, he's very camp and I've always liked the way they animate his movements. Uh, very swishy for a robot. It's, it's very, very entertaining. In any case, there is a real quick fire pace to the game. The cutscenes are energetic and will throw you right back into the action. Even when there's no combat on screen, simply navigating the environment feels fast. Whether you are running on wall run panels or grappling, hooking your way through the air or riding the slug. You can ride slugs and they go real, real fast. And then the combat itself, outside of the wackiness of the weapons, is that old Ratchet and Clank standby of run around and keep firing until things stop firing at you. And even with switching up the weapons, some could say it's fairly repetitive, fairly one note in its combat system, but I like it a lot. I mean, then again, I play Dynasty Warriors, so repetitive combat is something I don't truly mind if it's enjoyable enough. And it is here. Your weapons absolutely chew through enemies. There's so much going on. You've got your various gun effects. You've got enemies all over the screen. You've got currency flying all over the shop. As well as the guns you're directly firing, by the beginning of a combat sequence you could have flung out multiple mushroom people, multiple killer robots, multiple topiary sprinklers and multiple drones that are throwing bombs down from on high. And by the end of the game that's pretty much what I was doing. I had a small friggin army at my back while I was taking on a small friggin army. All while crates are exploding and bolts are flying and in my personal experience no no slowdown, no frame rate dips to speak of. I will say that sometimes it's a little too much. The visual effects and the just sheer density of the, the activity on screen can be overwhelming, especially for someone like me who can find their eyes very easily distracted. There have been moments where I'm just not sure what's going on on the screen or I'm firing at something I don't know is dead yet because I simply haven't seen it die. There's just so much going on and my eyes are drawn all over the place. It's so dense, every single image has so many things going on. But because of the general chaos that is Ratchet and Clank combat, it doesn't matter too much. You are, after all, just running around in circles, firing, 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 until shit's all dead. While I say that the game wastes very little time getting to the action, there are moments that are a little too slow, and those are the bits where you play as Clank, solving these Lemming-style puzzles, where you've got to manipulate the environment to get a line of dimensional clanks from one place to another. There's a skip button. It's the best button in the game. You can go in the menu and skip the puzzle, which I did because they're shit and dull. I don't mind the other style of subgame where you play as a little robot called Glitch and you go into a computer world and you just run around shooting, 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 shooting um, all of these computer viruses and stuff. And that's just um, a lot of shooting, so I don't mind that one so much. I don't like to do thinking, you see, because I'm a real true hardcore gamer, right gamers? Um, I just like to do shooting. 
But no, genuinely, I don't like to think. I do wish that the whole idea of dimensional travel was played with more. Most of the time you're going from environment that's lively to other version of that environment that's dead. You know, it could easily be confused for going back and forth in time rather than going to different dimensions. It's not till real late in the game that it even starts tinkering with the idea of dimensional variants of what you've been fighting. And even then, it doesn't do it much. So the idea of going through different dimensions really feels a lot more like it exists for a tech demo rather than to play around with anything in a conceptual sense. But the alternate dimension heroes, Rivet and K Kink? I was gonna say Rivet and Kink. But the, hmm, but the other dimension, Rivet and Kit. The other protagonists, they're pretty cool. When you do get to see other dimensional variants of the main characters, they don't often do something all that interesting with them, but they're nice to see. As I said, but this game, in terms of story and, and characterization, is cute rather than um, particularly compelling. And ultimately, this is a fast, chaotic, incredibly enjoyable game. I played it through from start to finish and enjoyed it pretty much consistently. Uh, I don't think there was any moment where I was truly blown away by how amazing the game was, but I thought it was very entertaining throughout. And that level of sheer consistency can't really be underrated. So there's your ratchets and your clunks anyway. Uh, very enjoyable, worth picking up. Uh, ratchet and clank, you know. Yeah.